This is Total Warhead, and welcome to another early game guide here in Total War Three Kingdoms. This one is in the 190 Rise of the Warlord start date, playing Yuan Shao. The goal of this early game guide it is turn 24. It is to basically get out of the north by a turn by about turn four to five, and from there basically start moving towards Dong and continue to wipe out Huang Shao completely. Then Liu Bei to see if we get a chance to capture Guan Yu and Sang Fei. Additionally, from there, engage Tao Shan in order to capture and bring Zhangba into our faction as faction heir to reduce the recruitment costs and the upkeep of our captain retinues by 25%. By doing all of this and by getting a coalition with Cao Cao on turn 2, I'm able to do a couple of things. I have no enemies to my north at this time, meaning and I'm stable in relations with them at least for now. And this gives me enough time to basically take out Cao Cao by turn 30 after I've dealt with all this area of the map. Additionally, I have a total of four uh, trade agreements at this moment, along with two characters that have clerk in or yeah, two characters in the campaign that have clerk. Additionally, aside from them, in terms of marriages, I've pulled in Cao Ren and then uh, Lu Jun from Lu Chong. And then we also have Lu Zi who appeared in our recruitment pool for us. We also have the capabilities of having a grand total of four characters in our campaign with Brilliant. And that actually stacks. Boy, doesn't have it. Where's the other ones that have it? Oh, Shonju is the other one. And then I believe Luo Jun is the third. Yeah, we have three in total. Luo Jun, Wu Ryulan, and then the last one is Shonju. These three um, have been very useful as we push towards Huang Shao to basically negate this, his main strength, which is the archery masters, and then also deplete the G marksman capabilities of Liu Bei and whatever was left of the Tao Shan faction. If you even get Gojia early on in the campaign or capture him from Cao Cao in these next 30 turns, that will be a fourth character, meaning that the AI will have zero total ammunition from there on out. Additionally, by proceeding in this direction with a coalition with Cao Cao, we basically, I'm going to put all of these armies on top of his settlements. And what you can do in this game, I'm going to showcase it here, is that about? you can, if you're in a coalition with someone, right, it supersedes a non-aggression pact and a military access. But if you want to declare war on someone that you have a non-aggression pact with or military access with, you have to wait at least 10 turns after canceling the non-aggression pact so you don't get penalized in reliability. But what you can do when you're in a coalition with a single faction is you can just issue declaration to leave the coalition with this said faction. And as long as you don't have any other active deals with this faction, you can declare war this exact same turn. And with that, you've basically been able to declare war with a faction in a single turn while also having utilized the coalition the previous turns in your campaign as a strategic uh, threat level manipulator, which in turn has helped us get all these trade agreements, non-aggression pack, stabilizations across the map so we can uh, basically we'll go into details into how juan chao works as a faction in turn one and with this uh game plan here we basically get in a situation where we can engage Cao Cao on two directions take out one of our main um threats in the campaign in the early game while also bordering sun che which means that you actually can engage very close to him and also prevent him from expanding northward in wars against Cao Cao or Cao Cao against him and therefore be able to actually go to war against him in the mid game if you want to to deplete him or fully take him out before he keeps expanding southwards all while you have the money to basically after you take out Cao Cao only have Sun Yuan Chao pushing towards Sun Che with maybe a secondary uh, auxiliary army and the rest of your armies you can rotate northwards to basically clean up the north and continue the campaign missions that you have. Here is a high level overview of our uh, faction council, people that are administrators, and then Zangba as our faction heir. And aside from that, I think that will be it here. I utilize mods in my campaigns. They are visual mods, um, UI mods, and then the bug fix mod. The reason why I use the bug fix mod is because I don't believe you should be playing this game without it. It basically fixes a lot of uh, bugs that CA will not fix. And I'm very glad that the modders have basically taken the time to fix these things and read my word salad of bug reports that I like to leave. So anyways, if you have any comments or anything you want to tell me, just let me know. I really want to thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy uh, this early game. All right, to begin the campaign, it is important to understand what Lineage is as the faction wide resource that Juan Chao has. So Lineage has multiple tiers. 
They are at level 1, tier 1, 30, magnitude, then admirable 60, esteemed 100, respectable 150, and an honorable is 300. Now, lineage is utilized for two things. When you capture a minor region, you can use 50 lineage points to acquire the region and get more military supplies, more faction support, 20% replenishment for your own army, and 20% replenishment for the garrison, making it a utility to basically mass expand really fast and shore up defenses in a region as you leave it. When you acquire a major region or a gate pass, it costs 75 lineage points instead of 50. Note that if you try to engage a settlement and you have less lineage than these magnitudes that I specified, and from the battle, which if you win a battle and you conduct it, you get 15 lineage points, you get enough actually get over the magnitude to basically utilize the secure and occupy option for 50 lineage points or 75 lineage points it will not be unlocked so for example if i'm grabbing the hene major region you need 75 lineage points to use this 75 lineage points for the secure and occupy option but if you're at 60 lineage before the battle and you get to 75 once the battle ends and you want to then utilize the 75 points to secure and occupy you can't because the game has not updated the option to have been unlocked because you have not reached that actual lineage points required to acquire them at your region um, using secure and occupy. Another way they utilize lineage points is there's this captain armory. Now, what happens in Yuan Shao's faction is that you can recruit captain retinues similar to the yellow turbans. Now, these captain retinues um, are also upgradable in quality from the basic ones to advanced ones that you unlock at Marquis faction rank. And then King lets you recruit elite versions of the Captain Retinues. For example, you start the campaign with one of the basic ones, which is a Gian Cavalry based Captain Retinue. Now, these Retinues can be upgraded in co for combat purposes to become pretty strong. And these upgrades are based on the magnitude of the tiers that they belong into. One of the tiers that I mentioned was Honorable, which is 300 lineage points. And once you get to 300 lineage points, for example, you can um, utilize any or get any of these. Some of them or most of the ones that you see here apply to the actual retinue, these upgrades. One of them here, increased army limit is a faction wide bonus. Now, one of them, Whitewater, is only for the captain unit, the actual captain unit that is here. For example, the captain, um, the Gian Cavalry captain gets Whitewater. The rest of the units do not. Now, important things to note here. The ambush battles one does not give 25% chance of ambushing. That appears bugged. I've tested it across two Captain Retinues, and I do not see that being applied. I'm not sure if chance of ambushing an enemy army, that any enemy army that this force attacks actually works. I'm assuming it does, but for the sake of this guide, since one of the two parameters does not work, I will not be utilizing it. Now, some of these upgrades are good for melee purposes. Some are good for missile units. Some are good for melee and cav units. And some are good in general. For example, um, freaking unbreakable. Whitewater, which can prevent active abilities from being utilized by the AI. Important note is that if you get Whitewater, for example, you got to make sure that the unit that has Whitewater, the captain unit, is visible during the battle. Now, the thing about this is that if you get Whitewater and then you get stuck, it means your unit will be hiding for the entirety of the map until the AI sees it. So just be careful with that as they could potentially prevent yourself from being able to utilize water, uh, white water in combat if your unit is actually hidden because you have enabled it stock. Now, if you're wondering why some of these icons are different than others, you see here that this is like white water has text in gold and then range damage has text in white. Um, the game just considers these elite in the code and these ones are just considered not elite. So I guess if they're elite, they go on the left side of the panel. And if they're not, they go on the right side. That's the only thing I saw. Then if you see the flag, it just means that they're just faction wide bonuses. As I mentioned, increase army limit. And then you start out with the captain missions one so you can use the captain missions to upgrade your actual uh, captain units. Now, these captain units here that I just mentioned or the captain unit missions that I just mentioned are these three that appear here. So the first one is achieve 100 or 300 or 500 kills with your captains. And this has three tiers for those three magnitudes. And what they do is they apply an upkeep cost reduction for your captain based retinue units from 10 minus 10 percent, minus 20 percent and minus 30 percent. Important note, the unit that applies this uh, kills to is only the actual captain of the retinue. 
So you must get 500 kills with this captain unit of this captain retinue to get these tiers unlocked. Next one is recruit captain retinues 3, 5, or 7 to get plus 30, plus 45, or plus 70 lineage per turn. This is really disgusting and, and basically the highest base passive magnitude that you can gain in lineage points in the campaign. And then the last one is win 3, 5, or 7 battles with captains in your army. And this will then reduce the recruitment cost of your captain retinues by minus 10%, minus 25%, and minus 45%. There is no limit to how many captains you can recruit. Just take that into account. You can just make, build your armies off of a single general and then captain retinues everywhere. But the next question is, how do you gain lineage? Because most faction resources in the game, when you hover over their icon at the top left, you can see how you can gain it or lose it if you can lose the resource. This one does not indicate that. You can gain lineage passively, meaning per turn on a per turn basis, or you can gain them instantaneously. For the passive ones, if your faction leaders are pulling an army, that's plus five. Your campaign missions can give you plus eight lineage per turn for however many set turns you have that that uh, bonus uh, available. Then if you're in a coalition with someone, that's plus five lineage per turn that you can get. I'm not certain if each coalition member that you're in a coalition with gives you plus five multiplier. Just, just so you know, just one of them at the very least gives you plus five. Uh, additionally, it, the ones that I indicated here per, for pursuit of enlistment is that really disgusting one plus 30 plus 45 and plus 70 is one that's really powerful that you can just keep gaining over time passively. Now, there's also instantaneous based lineage gains. Now, those are if you fight a battle, you can gain, I believe, plus five. And then if you win the battle, you get plus 10 or vice versa. Now, if you capture a general and you execute him you get 10 lineage if you capture a settlement that's plus 20 if you declare war against somebody that's plus 25 if you get a vassal that's plus 25 and then if you recruit a northern army unit the ones that are named northern that you unlock the five ancillaries to equip to generals um when once yuan Shao gets to level seven so all those units give plus 10 lineage each time that a single one of them is recruited there's additional units that provide lineage in the code. There's the Legendary Infantry, the G Vanguard Spearmen, the G Vanguard Crossbows, and the Xiong Nu Noble Cavalry. Of these types of units, the only two that are missing, which I might consider a bug, is the Xiong Nu Shock Calf and the Xiong Nu uh, Cataphracts. Or you can look at it the other way, that only the units that have the Northern name should be the ones that give the plus 10 lineage when recruited. Either way, you can gain lineage plus 10 this way for each unit recruited. And then armies raised. Every time you raise an army, you get plus 10 lineage. Every time you defend a settlement, that's plus 25. And every time you recruit a captain, that's plus 10 lineage points that you can gain. Another way that you can gain lineage is from the Yuan administration building that is uniquely modified for the Yuan Shell faction. And at the highest tier, it can give plus 4 lineage per turn. Uh, the tier 4, it's plus 2. And then tier 3, it's plus 1 lineage per turn. Um, so you can build these actually wherever, um, you want to up to tier four. So you can get plus two lineage wherever you have these. And then Palace of Juan can only be built once. And then this one is, um, basically plus four lineage. So this is passive that so you keep gaining it constantly every single turn. Now, as for the unique building of the Yuan Chao faction, it gives, uh, it has a minus 50 upkeep per turn or 50 upkeep per turn. It does give 30 prestige plus four lineage per turn as mentioned. Upgrades the Garrison Elite Retinues to Palace Guard. Palace Guard, very strong units. Plus 10 Public Order, plus 50% income from resources. You can only construct the Tier 5 um, once. And then the Economic Building Construction Cost is reduced minus 15%, which is the industry-based uh, buildings and population growth-based buildings. As for the Faction Unique units that Yuan Chao gets, there are a lot. So you get Defenders of Hebei, recruitable across all uh, generals at level that are level 6 or higher. So they're just heavy halberd infantry, good damage output, good charge bonus, melee attack rate. Um, armor is great. The melee evasion is really low. So what this means is that this unit is really good against units that don't have necessarily high H, uh, what do you call it? High um, AP damage, but they will struggle against, I mean, they'll struggle against those units, but they'll do really well against units that have high base weapon damage that these units can just munch through them over time. They do have a plus five bonus versus scav as a kind of spear slash uh, halberd in, uh, unit. And then the uh, weaker version of this unit is the Warriors of Yi, that is basically a less upgraded version of this unit. Recruitable across all generals 
once they're level three or higher. There's other other units that can be recruited across all different generals. Third, the G Vanguard crossbows, G Vanguard spearmen, both are extremely strong. Then you also have the Shang Nu shock calf, Shang Nu cataphract, and Shang Nu noble cavalry. All really good units to recruit, but they are expensive. Another one is legendary infantry, my personal favorite to utilize from early to mid game. Note that in vanilla, not in the bug fix mod that I'm utilizing, you can only recruit them in metal officers which are the purple ones in with the bug fix mod it fixes that so because it's a faction unique unit it's recruitable across all generals now in terms of yuan shao his armor has pretty high overall base value at 70 he does get extra melee damage recruitment cost reduction with six instinct plus 15 authority increasing his satisfaction and morale for his own retinue extra melee attack rate which combines well with his unique ability which many yuan characters have which is familiar conflict if characters with this um ability uh, are in the same battle they get the bonuses that you see here and majority of these all these characters are ones with juan last name and he is at rank three to start out he does start with meditation so he's unbreakable he does start with nobility so he does give encourage aoe and then 20 percent range block chance for melee cap and his own retinue and then one more assignment which we will definitely utilize early in this game he does get dignity for the plus five faction support faction white to make it easier to grab uh regions and then his faction-wide uh, bonuses are 50% more range uh, reinforcement rates faction-wide. 50% income from family estates at faction leader. That's like $1,000 right there. He does provide plus three um, starting rank for polearm infantry. That's like Yi-based uh, units, like Yi militia. And then warriors of Yi and Yi, uh, what do you call it? Um, defenders of Hebei. And then he does get minus 15% recruitment costs for polearm infantry as well. He does get a total of 60 wussing points across 30 resolve, so more HP uh, for him, but it's still very low value and a little bit more population growth if he was an administer, administrator. A little bit more melee damage and recruitment with plus 10 instinct and then plus 20 authority. So as you can see here, he's mainly an authority based figure. So you want him leading your armies and releasing enemy generals to get really good overall traits um, as a faction leader. And he does have bad traits per se in arrogant and then Vayne, so he can easily get captured if you lose a battle with him. And with Vayne, your his retinue is really expensive at plus 25% retinue upkeep. Vayne is really good for like um basically an administrator if you combine this with the traits tranquil. But for somebody that won't be an administrator, this isn't necessarily good at all. And then charismatic is really good as a faction leader with plus 12 of uh, plus 12 authority and then plus five satisfaction faction wide. And that's basically kind of the rundown here. Oh, he does get Distant Courage, which is a passive, huge passive effect range of 150 meters. And if he's not in melee, it applies and it gives plus 50 morale, basically making a lot of units almost reach like unbreakable levels. And then plus 50% melee charge bonus, which is really deadly when combined with cav units. Yuan Tan is his heir, very low wuxing points, mainly focusing on plus 20 authority. He does provide his own retinue plus three morale, more in defending uh, okay and then plus 15 percent income from family estates which is pretty good value overall so you can gain let's see how much we're getting right now we're getting about 3.3k right now from family estates and then aside from that he is incompetent not good minus 20 percent character experience vengeful so he does like very nasty people and then distinguished so he actually would want to be um what he could have released if he was a administrator he does start with familial conflicts because so good to combine him with Juan Shao, if only they have better weapons. His armor is interesting as it does provide minus 15% retinue upkeep, plus 11 authority, and plus 2 morale when attacking. So don't sleep on this, you know, it's kind of hidden in the armor. And it's 80 armor base, so he does get very good actual overall armor for himself. Now, aside from that, with the familial conflict, he also reaches uh, clarity and dignity. So good to deploy him on the, on the map to get 50% more campaign line of sight. And both Joan Chao and him, when they level up, can go for flexibility right away to get minus 50% redeployment costs faction wide very early in the campaign. Other unique characters are Jan Lian, who got reworked for Fates Divided, I think along with Joan Tan as well. Now, he does start with Senior Officer trait to make him a little bit happier. We're going to change that to Attendant to save $100 per turn. He's still going to be okay in happiness. Don't take off the titles for him and the other unique character because they're just going to tank in satisfaction. He starts with World of the Beast, really strong. He does have a uh, frivolous, so a bit better satisfaction, but a penalty to his character experience. And he does have relentless, 
um, which is pretty good with a minus 25% fatigue rate. His armor from Yang Lung's armor is not necessarily too high, but he does get 14 instinct for more melee damage, 5% more speed, and 12 more charge bonus. And he get he gets a good a weapon with 1.1k base and 1.1k um arm melee damage distribution, and then 20 melee attack rate, not necessarily the greatest, but you know, up there, and then plus 15 resolve for more HP, and then plus 5% more melee evasion, good for vanguards. And he has a unique ability in Mighty Thrust which is an active ability that you can use to make sure that when he charges in, he doesn't get potentially dismounted. And then he can cause a very good overall melee charge bonus uh, extra for himself, plus 10% melee damage armor piercing, and you could potentially route whatever he's engaging if it's in you know, because he actually can cause terror. Wen Xiao is a champion, and he does have a, a fierce firebrand, so he can give plus 10 melee evasion for spear infantry if he's a faction uh, leader. Um, I didn't mention for Jian Lian, he gives plus 10 charge bonus for shock calf. Now back to Wen Xiao, he does have Relentless, which is the effect is kind of null because his uh action or his armor can give fatigue immunity to him. He does get 5% remaining attack rate, plus 10 resolve and 70 armor base. Pretty good. And he starts with Binding Fury, but he has a unique ability that is so strong, especially with combined with night battles, flaming shot, fire arrows, and um, what do you call it? Roar of the Beast. With Sweshi Roar, which is another type of roar, at minus 30 morale at 35 meter range for 15 seconds for 60 with a 60 second cooldown. So it's an active debuff. So you can pop this and then just start moving around and just make sure that shit just starts basically routing as you're using it. He does start with Wisdom for where to fill on and corrupt and replenish supplies assignments. So he has that going for him and Binding Fury already. He does have a good bow that we're actually going to give to Cao Cao, which gives plus 10 or Yuan Chao. Uh, which actually gives plus 10 cunning and pretty good overall damage uh, distribution. Let's make sure we give it to Mr. Juan Chao this turn so we can utilize it for his upcoming battles. We also start with a strategist that does have plus 25 cunning and 10 authority. Pretty good. And don't sleep on him. You might look at him and with his negative effects that you see here and say, oh, he's not really good, you know, um, as a administrator. Well, minus 10 military supplies. Is pretty strong as you can cause the ai to potentially start getting attrition and therefore retreat before trying to engage your region or um basically uh awesome to face attrition if they're sieging you so then they retreat now don't you put him in a location that you want to build a lot of money on because of the extra corruption in the minister commandery just utilize him for the military supply reduction as kind of like a choke point uh administrator he does give cunning at plus 15 percent chance of ambushing for own army he has arrogant like Juan Chao, so not good. And then suspicious, eh, whatever. He does get stifling deluge, so it's an AoE that can cause enemy generals to not potentially be able to use their abilities as they're caught in the range. And he's good to put with archers because of judgment to get that 25% extra range damage. Now, because we're going to get a lot of strategies in the campaign, especially a really good one from confederating Han Fu, we don't care about him and we want to save this money that he's actually costing us at this time. So we're actually going to banish his ass. And you're going to be like, dude, what the hell, man? You were talking that he was a good administrator. We don't necessarily need him. We have plenty of people that can do the job that he can do. And we can save that money for now. Additionally, we're going to divorce Lady Liu from Juan Xiao here and utilize her for marriage purposes. All right, before we continue in the campaign, I want to note that I had to start a new save. I like, cleaned up my saves that I've had in the game. And then my RNGs, uh, the RNG cause ancillaries that I have to be a bit different than what I probably have showcased so far in the campaign. So whatever ancillary I have right now, if I have a bronze one, I'm just going to trade it away. If I don't have one from the RNG, I'll just trade away the stone pig here to get this marriage with Sal Ren and bringing us a character that does have a good bow into our faction just for about $23 per turn across 10 turns. We want to do this marriage first before the marriage with Han Fu as this marriage with Sal Ren is negative. While Han Fu's is, uh, Han Tong of Han Fu's faction is positive. And because we will do battles, I'm going to lose unit model slash HP. Therefore, lowering my overall military strength parameter of the positive factors that we see below Lady Liu's name. Um, you definitely want to do diplomatic deals at the start of a turn before you take any losses to your units. So if you have any deals that are negative, you best take advantage at this time to make them happen. Next, we're going to go to Han Fu. And we're going to get here $380 back for a non-aggression pack. Now, we're going to get $183 from Han Fu for a military access. And with that, he's actually going to be trending positive above um, 
what do you call it, 51 uh, total attitude. So what we'll do is we'll manipulate his trending towards or his current attitude towards a trending towards value by giving him an individual penny this turn. And as you see, he's now very friendly. Wish, once we try to marry Han Tong after our first initial battles, it's going to cause the marriage to have a more positive diplomatic value as we're now more friendly. Now, with Cao Cao, I did not care about being very friendly before the marriage because Cao Cao has, um, I believe it's opportunistic or cunning. One of these parameters of his personality makes him be kind of indifferent to um, the overall attitude he has with another faction when doing deals. So Additionally, I've put back uh, Wen Xiao to the assignment, which I didn't have because I had to reset the save. And additionally, I changed the title for Jan Lian down to Attendant. As for the next step, we're going to go to the Captain Armory. We're going to give the melee charge bonus buff for our retinue here to bring up, for example, a Captain Retinue from 216 to 248, which is a valuable buff. And with that, we're now going to engage this army, do a duel with this character to get as much experience as possible for Joan Shao, and additionally get as many kills as I can with a Jan Caroly Captain in order to finish the Captain mission of reducing my overall upkeep by the end of this turn by minus uh 30% for all these units which are pretty expensive let's go all right to begin this battle we're gonna put the rest of the units that are not the high range block chance unit and the one that I want to get kills with and Yuan Shaho will do a duel into my favorite uh formation which is the cautious dragon so let's put him like this make sure the the missile units have guard mode very good we'll keep these guys as they are for now and then these guys are gonna now move forward make sure that the one that's gonna be eating up the amp the ammunition is in loose formation and we'll just let this guy first eat the ammunition of the enemy all right so now we'll just wait for the enemy to use up all of its ammo right now it's at uh what is it called i bet i don't think i've lost that much hp i'm at 50k now i'm at 49 no unit models lost i think i'll drop to like 47k maybe lose one unit model or two uh by the time their ammunition's done let's see 48 one unit model dead and almost almost 47 and he's almost has it oh two unit models 46k okay and that will be it all right very good so with that now we're going to utilize Juan Xiao to off of guard mode no don't accept his challenge first start shooting him and basically we're going to weaken his hp it's kind of the goal he's gonna start moving his units forward All right, you, you, there we go. Very good. You don't want him to lose too much HP, else he'll basically kind of like, um, what do you call it? He'll kind of just like not accept the duel if he loses too much HP because he'll, he'll be thinking, oh shit, I'm definitely going to lose this duel if I engage this guy. So just watch out for that when you're doing these shenanigans. All right. I routed him. Very good. We can let the archer come back. Um, definitely want to route the sabers so they actually are shattered and they just eat up its unit, their unit models slowly but surely. And Yuan Shao has one. Excellent. 13 unit models. Nine. Go for this guy. I don't think we'll be able to actually catch him. He might be too far away now. Where's the edge of the map? Mm, actually, we might be able to catch him. Okay, very good. Now, how many kills does the, cav the captain have? Okay, very good. Almost 200. So let's get him out of the actual woods over here. And what I want to do is keep the captain um, without moving for a little bit of time at least. So that way the stamina comes back and I get more actual speed. All right, we almost have it. Very good. And then with them surrounding Juan Shao, the cav unit should be able to route them. Very good. Okay. okay, with all those enemies killed, we got good money out of the battle. Now, here in terms of the options, I would say that we want to get as much money as possible to start out the campaign. So let's get the income it as an option. And from there, as you can see, whenever you win a battle, you get that 10 lineage and then five from doing the battle. So now we have a total of 25 at the moment. And now we're going to grab this settlement. Destroy the traitors. And actually, let me show you this before we continue. You can see that we have now 445 kills out of 500, which is what this Captain Unit is letting us actually achieve um, by getting all those kills that previous battle. So with that out of the way, now we're just going to do this one really fast and get a charge on these Archer Militia and then complete this mission.
Now, I want to point out what I've mentioned. If you don't have enough lineage before the battle, if you get enough during the battle, you won't actually get this unlocked. So make sure that if you're trying to do secure and occupy, you see it requires 50 lineage to even unlock the option that you actually have it so you can actually utilize this. So here, we're just going to do a basic occupation as we didn't even want to get secure and occupy. And when we got the settlement, we get 20 lineage. All right, Juan Shao leveled up. So let's get what I mentioned, flexibility. And we want to get as much food as possible for the next turn or turns after that as well. So let's get the drifter farming camp here constructed to keep multiplying our food production in this area. And from there, have enough food for diplomatic deals coming up. All right, here, let's get a trade agreement with Juan Quan. And he's the guy that has two females available for marriage. So we're going to end up marrying both of them. What we'll do here is, first off, we'll give enough money to make this deal happen is we'll marry first the one that does not get along with Juan Tan. So I'll make this deal occur. Then we will divorce this lady from him. And then here we'll get $214 back from him and make sure that Yuan Tan ends up marrying with the female that we see here. All right. And here I basically gave pennies to Wang Quan to get him to very friendly. We got a higher chance of getting the non-aggression pack. And with that, I'll get $311 from him and a little bit more happiness coming along with it. Next up, the military axis is at positive 3.2. So we'll make this happen as well with make payment. We want to get instantaneous money. I know you get more over time, but I just like to have Very instantaneous well. money in the bank. Continuing, we're now going to marry Han Tong into our faction by marrying Han Tong to Wang Fan Yue. When we confederate it, when we confederate Han Fu, we're going to end up with a lot of distant relatives due to Han Tong already being a distant relative tied to our family. And Han Tong is, I believe, a son of Han Fu. With that done, Han Tong has agricultural development, so we can get a grand total of 150% more food production in the local commandery and four more food with an additional minus two construction time for agriculture in our way commandiri. So a couple of things that you shouldn't do, maybe it's just one thing that you shouldn't do this turn is with Cao Cao, do not get a military access as getting a military access will actually reset the value that you have for a forming a coalition in terms of military strength and strategic situation. For some reason that drops when you get the military access will become very negative for the next turn, which I actually wanted to be positive to get a coalition with Cao Cao. Additionally, because we want that coalition, do not disband these initial units, even though they have very steep overall upkeep, because these units in turn are going to be useful for us to boost up our military strength and be able to get deals in turn two. Now that is it here for this turn. Nothing else to do. Let us continue. All right. To begin here on this turn two, we're going to start deploying people to get 10 lineage per turn for every character raised. So one that we would actually want to raise is this lady whose sole utility is going to keep is for her to be keep getting raised over and over and over again or deployed over and over and over again. So let's get her. We have three armies or one more army that we can deploy. We want to put Jan Lian deployed because we want to utilize him on the next turn um, to basically get him experience in battles as we move on the in two turns to grab this farmland over here. But for now, we need enough money to actually be able to get this lady into this army who has more cunning than this other lady, so more ammunition, and then switch this um, basic archer militia to a trebuchet. And from there, be able to move on this settlement that appears down here. So now we have a total of 75 lineage. If we were to engage the settlement, we have enough to actually have unlocked the secure and occupy option of, se of 75 lineage if we wanted to. Now, this is going to be a battle that might seem a bit difficult. You could definitely cheese it to have an easier time by manipulating the enemy's deployment. We're going to actually confront him head on and basically from there abuse the AI and defeat it. So we're just going to go here and engage this army. No mercy. And we can do demand surrender. It's not going to work. Now, this character has Orphra Advisor. I don't remember what that does. He does have Wisdom of the River, which is good and a good uh, skill to start out with on the strategist uh, tree. A couple of archers, the spear guard, and the infantry captains are units that we worry about, and then the saber cavalry unit that we see there. So we're going to continue siege here, and then this lady here, we don't necessarily need her for any more for any purpose. Let's actually remove these units from her so we can just keep redeploying her as zero cost. And we got to make sure that when turn three starts, we have no additional armies deployed because Hanfu will have two armies, so we want to confederate his characters so they join my faction now coming back here we're gonna do this battle and from there grab this settlement really early on in the campaign which is a very good point to be in having already captured Hene by the end of turn two
All right, so we've captured Hene. We got some pretty good money out of the battle, like $400. We're just going to do a normal occupy here, not secure and occupy. And with that, we also complete the mission to secure 15 units. So we get 10% replenishment, which is going to be useful for us on the next turn to get these units back up to full health. And we're completing a bunch of missions in the campaign that actually give lineage that I mentioned before. Now we're getting eight lineage across six turns, helping us get potentially enough lineage to uh, have enough to secure and occupy many regions now aside from that if we look at our captain missions we move a little bit forward uh we get level one for the triumph so that's good for us here and then this lady here we don't necessarily care about her anymore like this trebuchet is good i only got her to get hene asap i don't necessarily need her for any purpose except to get army raised lineage because she's really not useful for anything else so let's recall her and we have enough units here to do some pretty good overall damage on the enemy. On turn 4, I should be able to reroll Joan Shao's Vein trait. So these units don't necessarily have as much upkeep as they actually have at this moment. And then aside from that, if we look at the buildings that Hene has, it is a food slash commerce location. We can actually keep the buildings that this place has at this moment just to keep saving money. And then just basically build this up later. But for now, I need to try to save money. To actually get the uh full uh retinue or two retinues uh or a full army sorry here to actually then be able to get a very big army when we try to get dong which will go up against half an army or so of jello turbines which can be a bit of a pickle to deal with so as we look here nothing else i really want to do at this time in terms of diplomacy nobody that we care about doing any deals with at this moment Lu Xiong is at negative 0.2 for the non-aggression pact. This is going to get more positive in just a bit. And we're ready with only one army deployed to confederate Han Fu on the next turn with all of these um, bonuses activated for the next two turns to three turns and six turns. Let's continue. So now we get the pop-up to destroy Han Fu's faction. So for five turns, we can get 4k population growth, five public order, and then 20% income from peasantry. And we get the chance to confederate Han Fu this turn. And with that, boom, we're dropping income because we got all those, um, what do you call it, characters 
on our side now but with that out of the way now we have a chance to get another trade agreement which we will do we complete path of glory and our next mission is to defeat gsc which we're not going to do um this in this early game we're gonna focus on destroying what's in our southeast all right so for prestige points i'm gonna get three into trade agreements you're gonna see exactly why this many and then one assignment as i can get reward to fill in and corrupt and still keep the agricultural levels that i have at this time we only need one administrator this early on in the game and that administrator will actually be um in the location that we just actually acquired to our north here of anping and we did just get even more turns of lineage so we're getting plus eight in total for the or plus eight per turn for the next 11 turns do not recall anybody keep everybody deployed as is at least for a few more moments Sprout all right here i've unequipped every item that everybody has in order to actually trade them away so there's a lot that we could actually trade at this time and i really mainly want to trade bronze items so we'll trade this red thoroughbred the expert's leather and then the officer we'll keep the shaman and the two stone pigs all right so now on turn three because we got all this military strength deployed we can get the highest value that we can for forming a coalition unless i recruited units a previous turn as juan chao now as for what we're doing here is i'm gonna give three bronze items then one silver item in the red stallion and 25 food and 21 dollars across uh 10 turns that's 210 dollars to get a coalition with sao sao this is gonna boost up my strategic situation which in turn is gonna help me get money and better deals with factions around me including getting a very good character from Lu chung so we're gonna give up a lot to do this but what this also lets you do is potentially betray sao sao um if you want to because we start out an aggression pack with them you can leave a coalition and declare war on a faction that you leave a coalition with if it's only you two in the coalition the same turn that you leave the coalition without getting um penalized in diplomatic reliability so in turn you can actually uh, basically circumvent deals that you have with an existing faction just as long as you don't have any other active deals at the time that you do the cancellation so we still gotta wait uh, like about 10 turns more before leaving the coalition without potentially you know betraying sasa without actually getting penalized for betraying him now i'm gonna do a trade agreement with san jan who's directly above me in order to get 275 dollars on my side okay here we're going to improve our relations with luchong all the way to 60 which will be too very friendly all while getting a non-aggression pact and luo jun into our faction for two very common items and with that we're gonna get very friendly with a guy who essentially is kind of like a little bulwark against dong zhou coming from the west man eh, whatever he lo chung kind of sucks you know as a faction of the ai but i'm just speaking here i did give a penny to lo chung see if i could get him to very friendly i just don't want to work my way up slowly to get to above 51 so i'm just gonna get a military access that now i can do with him and 368 dollars back out of doing this deal with him now out of the characters we get Anfu is free upkeep. He did have a stone pick that I actually removed from him. And then Luo Jun comes with rights of Zhou. Let's actually give this to Mr. Hanfu, who's a little bit mad, to actually just stabilize him because he's the one that got hit by faction grudge from Confederation. That'll go away. And then here, he does start with Binding Fury and then Abundance. So he does get that extra food if he's a administrator. But he's mainly good as a uh, combat based hero, as he does have modest. So he gets minus 15% revenue upkeep. And he also has. 15% income from peasantry faction wide if he's a faction leader not necessarily great but just pointing that out to you and then this is let me just talk about the serial weapons this chick whatever you know random shit that she's got on she's got scholarly and brilliant oh dude that's not random man that's some pretty good stuff so she's got 25% character experience and then she's got brilliant but that's not all let's ignore her for a second Lo Jun has brilliant who we just got from Lu Chong and he has patience so that's very good so I believe that Brilliant still stacks in this game. So we can get two characters with Brilliant, but only two? So if we keep looking around here, to so Mr. Shonju that we also got, that is three characters with Brilliant and this turn that we get already in the campaign. So let's find out if this really stacks. Now, Shonju, good character as he does have a very good armor that actually gives 5% character experience for this army and pretty good extra overall cunning. He just got 103 at this time. And then with with uh what do you call it dutiful and brilliant he's good for combat purposes and also good for his satisfaction to be pretty stable a warning to you when you get to second marquee do not put jan lian and wen shao into these positions and remove their titles as their satisfaction will be too low for you to be able to manage the hit that you're gonna take from doing that so aside from that though we don't care about these units anymore so we're going to recall these g militias that are deployed in hanfu's army 
We don't care about him being deployed, so let's recall him. And then Shunju, we're going to recall these units as well, as we don't want him with basic archer militia. And then for Zhang He over here, let's talk about him for a second. So Zhang He has about 30 Wuxing points with a good amount of them going to resolve. But then the good thing about him is that he has cunning, so his army is going to have extra ambush chance, which is great. And then he also gets um, geographic mastery. So the entire army, as long as he's in the battle and it's not in an elephant, can get 50% more charge resistance and 10% more speed and then 100% more force spotting. Okay, which is pretty damn good. Now, he does get Sanghi's armor that gives him pretty good overall AP damage, which, of course, if you think about Sentinels, you know, you really want to boost up damage as much as possible to combine with how well their melee evasion is. At very low 43 armor base that he gets, but then again, with high melee evasion, who the hell cares about base? He does get 22 expertise from his armor, and then his weapon has 1.4k armor piercing damage and then 10% melee evasion. So pretty good character overall, so we're definitely going to utilize him. A lot in our campaign here and then we don't care about the axe pen units that he starts out with I'm just gonna remove them for now and then this character here he does have considerations for encourage and then earthen rampant he basically does not give us anything else that's useful except agricultural development but we already have a farmer we don't necessarily need jingping here so we can actually remove him from the faction to save that money as he is not a distant relative in the and we're not going to do banish because we can't afford the hit to our satisfaction we're going to take him out of the picture and from there the only characters that have character upkeep at this time are shunju zhang he and then jan lian and wen shao so pretty good characters to keep in our faction as it is okay point of note because we got the automatic war declaration with gsc we got 25 lineage because of that and now every single turn i'm gonna do this just do it on your side i won't necessarily record this every turn I'm going to deploy these characters to get 10 lineage across each of them being deployed in my armies. There, there we go. Cunning. Or as armies. And then from there, I'll get one more. The question is, which is the last character that I want to deploy? So something that you can also do is um, once you get later in the campaign, you can just basically if you see characters that have good items that can be recruitable, you can act once you get to zero recruitment cost. All you got to spend is 10 lineage to deploy the character. You have to spend $1,000 to get them. And you're, you're going to start getting Buku lineage later in the campaign. And then what you can do is basically recruit characters and steal their items. And then take them all, basically remove them from your faction at only a cost of 10 lineage. And that is it. So it's pretty damn awesome. All right, next, I'm going to grab Jan Lian and put him into this um, commandery of Hene. Give me a bit better mustering turns. So I'm going to recruit a big army because I'm going to secure and occupy with Yuan Shao's army, this farmland here at only 50 lineage, and then get all of that replenishment and mustering um, turn reduction to get a full army pretty well built up to proceed in this campaign. All right, I have one more character to race to get my third army raised. We're going to get Guriolan deployed, and she's going to be one of the characters that we'll utilize for Brilliant in our campaign. No! Let's get her here and let's just ban these units. I don't necessarily want her to have these basic units with her um, for the usability of the brilliant trait. All right. And then here I've put both Zhang He and Yuan Shao's army. You might have seen it actually on enemy territory. I moved it a little bit back and put him in ambush. And then what I'm doing here is I removed all the units that Yuan Shao had to save the money for the next turn. And then from there, I also that Guru Yulan lady, I recalled her. I basically want to deploy her in Zhang He's army the next turn. And then from here, I'll move onwards to basically grab this location here. Now, I think that will be it here. There's nothing else in diplomacy that I want to do. Let us continue. All right, beginning here, the first thing we want to do is in the next five turns, I need to put an administrator in the location that used to be Hanfu's capital. So we're going to get the administrative um, reform there. Now, this army I want to utilize to grab this location. But what I want to do is some shenanigans. And it is that I'm going to put in Grand Commandant Wen Shao. And I'm going to put Jan Lian here into Grand Excellency. And then from there, since I already have the Faction Council unlocked, I can go here and re-roll a Faction Trait for Juan Shao. Warning, as I've already gone through this in this early game guide, if you take the Settlement of Hene with Pei uh, Juan Shao in it, before you do this Character Trait re-roll, this will get replaced with Kill Wounded Hero Pei Juan Shao, and you won't be able to click this. Just take that into account that you might lose out. If you actually don't do this right now you see that we went up in money a little bit that's because we just got wait what did we get replaced with enigmatic oh so we replace vein which greatly increases character upkeep of or sorry uh red and new upkeep 
and that was like 25% extra cost. Now we're going to save that money, still be able to keep uh, Pei Juan Shao as leader of the army, and then still be able to utilize him for battle purposes. Now for this upcoming battle, we're going to deploy into the main army, Mr. Shunju here, and then he has Brilliant, and then over here, we're going to call in the lady that we called in the previous turn, Gu Ryulan, and then the next person, which will be Mr. Lu Jun that also has Brilliant. So that is three characters with Brilliant. And to see what effect that has, we're going to go here and just do this battle to grab this settlement this turn. And from there, basically, let's see how much we drop the actual uh, income or that, um, or sorry, ammunition that the enemy has. So if we go here, all right, victory. And if we go five ammunition, look how much we've dropped for this unit. And then for the archer's captain, three freaking ammunition just disgusting the units that we have are good enough to handle everything that enemy has at this moment especially because um the yellow turbans has such, have such low um what do you call it morale to start the campaign so without further ado let us begin And with that, we got $524 from the battle. And then, oh, we were able to actually capture Pei Juan Chao, thereby actually letting us get a little bit of a uh, lineage by executing him and getting the two handed mace, which we can utilize for trade purposes. He is level three. That's why you see $400 here if we actually were able were to release him. And then the two handed mace, though, um, it, in essence, I think you can get more money out of it than the $400 that we see here are a faction that likes us a lot. So, you, should, you shouldn't necessarily execute with commanders leading armies, especially if it's a faction leader, because the faction wide buffs that you can get can be pretty bad. But for now, let's get as much lineage as possible and then work our way from there and secure and occupy. Punishment. And then if we go here and we give to Shunju the title of general of the left, and then we go here and go batshit crazy. Just look at this. Look at the freaking replenishment at this time. Ooh, ooh, wrong wrong little uh artillery dude and then look at this 150 upkeep legendary infantry and now we have a full army sure we have 214 dollars here that we have to basically manage what we're gonna do is we're gonna forget all these little units that are over here and then these guys are all gonna stay deployed so we can keep utilizing them for um what do you call it for the chance to get uh brilliant once we step onto the lands of uh, Mr. Huang Xiao, and then they we're going to get a full health army by the next turn. Now, Mr. Han Fu is great, has very low satisfaction due to the faction grudge. Let's give him patrol commander to stabilize him for a little bit. And then this lady is also very unhappy. So we can give her the stone pig that appears here to get her to 30 satisfaction. And then the last characters that are unhappy at this moment are Jan Lian, who's at 47 at the moment. We're going to play with fire. Remove this. He's at 20. Let's see. How much is uh, Mr. Hanfu right now? 41? Yeah. 
Let's remove this from him and then give him eight satisfaction. So he's at 30 now. And then if we go to Mr. Where? Mr. Wen Chao, he's at 46 right now. And we don't necessarily have anything that we, we can give him to make him a little bit happier. What we can do is just remove this title and then let's see how much he drops. So he drops to 21. So he does get this negative 21 in total. And I already gave these to these guys. So yeah, we'll keep him at 21 at least for now. And then we'll change him in the next turn or give the stone pig uh, to him the next turn to stabilize him. So we're at $8,894 at the moment in income per turn. And then we have a full army, which actually let's change him to general of the right. And now we're at $1,000 in income. And before I forget, because I keep forgetting this, let's remove Sauron's bow and give it to Shunju. And now this artillery piece has a freaking total of 19 ammunition for the next few battles. And we should have a pretty deadly battle coming up, engaging against Huang Xiao's army. Before clicking enter, and I thought of one way to fix our total actual uh, satisfaction issue. So let's recall Wen Xiao for now. And then I'll put him with reward the filial and in corrupt the next turn. So in two turns, I'll be able to get plus 10 satisfaction and fix his own satisfaction issues here. I think with 21 satisfaction, I'm playing a dangerous game with that value. I could certainly fix that um, by just giving him another title like this one here that costs 100 salary. Let's just do this. Keep him a little bit happier. And from there, continue. All right. I've called in three generals to get to plus 30 lineage. And then I changed my assignments by recalling Zhang Liang. I don't necessarily need him mustering anymore. I can get that population growth uh, penalty removed. And then I'm putting in the same Hene location, the plus 10 satisfaction to help with the corruption at a location that we could, in essence, make more money than the other two locations up in the north above me. I will utilize Han Fu over here in order to get... Um, is it Han Fu, I think? Uh, I'll decide which, which character will be my administrator, but of course, I gotta wait till I have enough money to be able to recruit a full retinue with that character. Unified. We're gonna keep everybody here put place, and I put Yuan Shao at the very edge here, because what happens is that when you attack the Don Major region, is if you attack it from this left area, if you're looking from the south to the north, you actually can't reach it. If you attack it from the sea and then go on the land, you won't be able to reach the region. But if you attack from the right side of Dong and then try to engage the settlement, you can on the right side. So I put Yuan Chao's army at the very edge. So I can just jump in the water and then attack Dong the next turn. And I put him in ambush in case enemies decide to pull in shenanigans. And then these guys here are visible for the enemy. Now, I want to point something out. When I recruited the Leandering Infantry, I didn't get the plus 10 lineage that I mentioned at the beginning of the campaign. That's because while I was recording this early game guide, the bug fix mod got updated. So the Leandering Infantry no longer generate lineage as a Northern Army unit um, when recruited. Because technically, they're not a Northern Army unit. So, yeah, that makes sense. Now, that is it here. Let's continue. Now, because I want to get to the point where I can utilize uh, Yuan Shao uh, with, uh, basically in battles once I get his War skill with him, which I'll level him up fast with the assignments. I want to get somebody else to do reward the fill and corrupt, and Han Fu can do that if I level him up twice. We're going to utilize um, agricultural exploitation to get more food with him, but also mainly to be able to get the actual... Um, experience with him to level him up to get the reward of fill and corrupt as for this army as i was mentioning we're gonna move wen chao's army or Juan chao's army to the edge of this area right here and then we're gonna get to this part of the map and engage the settlement now note that if we look at the arch yo i was about to say he replaced the archery masters they have 47 ammunition here so we're gonna continue siege and then what I'm going to do is bring these guys across the pond right over here to... Actually, can I get them over to this side? I'll be able to, yeah, I'll be able to reinforce. So let's go right here. And with that, if I engage and we look at the archery masters, one of the strongest archery units in the game, now they have 22 ammunition. So they're getting heavily penalized and therefore don't necessarily inflict that much pain on me from their total ammunition output. They have a pretty good overall army of very offensive um, melee units and then very like flanky slash uh, prolonged combat um, melee cav units and then crossbows to eat up AP, uh, basically with AP damage the enemies that have armor. And we have two good generals that we can utilize for combat purposes. Mainly Sang He is the one that we want to utilize. And then from here, we can just... The Surrender is not going to work. Um, wait, wait, why can't we do night battles? We don't have night battles what why can't we do night this is so confusing okay my brain sort of broke because i still don't know how the hell i had night battles unlocked as i don't have anybody that has night battles at this time 
in this battle. So anyways, I'm going to start doing this battle now. And I basically continued siege. And upon re-engaging like 50 times, I still don't see night battle check mark appear again. So I guess I'm making an early game guide and finding out new weird situational things in the game. All right, let's begin here.
never in doubt. Okay, and with that, a lot of combat potentials uh, taken out in this battle. Very good amount of money ac acquired. And we do have 272 in total, uh, what do you call it, in lineage at this moment. It is valuable. Now that we've arrived at Dong, we get this in order to just basically move out ASAP across the battlefield ahead. Um, and also stabilize one of the best commanderies in the game as soon as possible to start making as much money as I can from the very beginning that I get this. But let's get secure and occupy. And then with that, Yuan Shao has leveled up yet again. Now, with Yuan Shao, we can get intensity and then ability to get to then get distant courage. So let's work our way through that. And now we're going to get 25 more charge speed for a uh, retinue that's mainly for combat purposes. Sang He leveled up. We want to use him for combat purposes. Let's work him up in the tree this direction. And then uh, Luo Jun levels up. He is good for combat as well. So we're just going to work him through Guile, Consideration, Earthen Rampant, etc. Now with this battle completed, we can get a trade agreement with Liu Dai and get $352 right here. This is one of the trades that we can do because he doesn't intend to get trade with Lu Shang that early in the campaign. But we got another trade agreement. And the fourth one will be with Kong Rong once we take Wang Chao's last settlement to our east okay to finalize this turn i recruited already two generals the two strategist females and then i recruited sal ren and i'm gonna utilize him as the admin of this location up here he only has minus 12 percent in total construction costs but i just want to utilize him as someone who i will keep deployed and if anybody that i don't have deployed that i would want to use as an administrator he's the best one at the moment because everybody else either i want them deployed like luo jun because of brilliant chun ju for example zhang he and then the rest, they don't really are uh, that important to me for them to be administrators. While well, he can just be an administrator and also gain the experience. So that'll be good for him. So let's go here. Put him into this position. It's going to cost me upkeep. But believe me, we need to do this. And let's recall him. So we're going to go back up in money. And then with that trade agreement that we have now with Liu Dai. With um, Wang Quan and then Zan Yan. We have three. And then I'll get the fourth one once I engage this settlement over here in two turns, I believe. I don't think we can reach. Let me. Can I reach there this upcoming turn? I think on Force March I actually can. The yeah. Oh, well, actually, with these guys, I should be able to. And strike true. Let me just make sure 100. percent There shouldn't be anybody because we basically eliminated everything he has. It's okay if they're in, if these guys are on Force March, and then these guys were getting so much replenishment that they can go on Force March as well to just reach this location and take it. Um, and then from there, I think we're good all around. We're low on money, but we're proceeding very well in terms of our actual progress. One of the hidden things about securing Occupy is that when you do a normal occupation, you cost a minus 20% penalty to population. With securing Occupy, you don't. So if you see here, we're at the max cap of population, which is great, as we can therefore, once we level up this location, have an easier time already reached at 800, working our way up to 1.5 million to get a good bonus from income to all sources at a location that's very good for income purposes of industry and um commerce we're gonna keep the county school building built so we can recruit archers which are very good units to have in our armies as well so additionally we're gonna do one more thing but it's gonna be starting the next turn we should have done it the previous turn also and it is that zerong has a lady that has what clerk minus two construction time per turn faction wide she gets along with Juan Chao as well one of the advantages of getting doing the coalition with Cao Cao is getting visibility with zerong and then with liu yao to trade with them we definitely can do these things in order to be able to progress uh, fairly well and get another trade and one of the uh, better generic characters in the game. All right, that's it here. Let us continue. An advantage to having waited to marry Sarong, uh daughter, said you to our faction, is that usually for faction leaders, the faction heirs have a better chance of marrying other characters compared to the faction leaders. So marrying Yuan Chi or using Yuan Chi for marriage to bring Yuan Chi uh, to the faction has a big difference for us here, even though Yuan Shao likes her boom negative 5.3 but if we go to juan chi it's actually at 0 0.4 so now we can bring her into the faction yes, and basically now with that done we have a character that we can utilize for supervised construction as well and with that out of the way there are some assignments that we could turn off because we have like a gazillion food at the moment like for example han tong here we could remove and then if we look at the characters here han tong and then the other one is han fu and Fu's the one that's going to reach for where the fill and corrupt faster. So we can remove Han Tong for now. And then from there, utilize supervised construction to build up our commanderies with more ease. I moved Yuan Chao with Force March closer towards Lin. And then here is Mr. Sejue, or Sejue, Sang He, ready to grab this region 
uh, this turn. And therefore, we should be able to trade with Liu Bei this upcoming turn. We won with integrity. Now let us celebrate with a 15 lineage. And then here, of course, it's a very low level settlement. So utilizing secure option for this small little army that we see here is not necessarily advantageous, even though our generals, they take a bit of a hit here. It is a major region as well, but I don't necessarily care about this at this time. We can just replenish these guys slowly but surely right. and then continue from here. Now we've reached the max cap of lineage at the honorable level, so we can utilize this for our own purposes. And then now I also want to move forward to be able to reach... Um, this settlement of Liu Bei, because we're going to go to war against him next. All right, here is yet another trade agreement, this one with Con Rong. And then we can get a, our fourth trade agreement, that's $403 and a non-aggression pack, so we stay very friendly with them. That's and from that's there, we don't have to worry about this flank. All we got to worry now is basically dealing and eliminating Liu Bei and then Tao Shan from the campaign. All right, to finalize here, I've three, I've raised three generals as three individual armies. So I got plus 30 lineage. We're at 330. Note that the max cap is 1K that you can have. I haven't utilized it on anything. Once I see a big battle in front of me, I'll upgrade either this retinue or another one that I would like to upgrade. Now, what I want to do is at least get to marquee before upgrading retinues that much. If I were to spend ponies points on anything, it would be an increased army limit. But I want to have points available in case I want to use secure lineage on settlements that I want to grab. All right, so that will be it here for this turn. I'm not even manipulating treasury. I'm keeping it as is for now because I want to keep a balance of public order and in terms of income at the moment in order to be able to handle um, these recruiting a bunch of Captain Retinues. And once I get one more win, I get that minus 45% recruitment cost for Captain Retinues. So I'll start spamming the Axe Band uh, Captain Red and used to recruit seven of them. There'll be about 7k total dollars, and then I'll be getting 70 lineage per turn for every single turn. That is it here. Let's continue. All right, so we get this pop up here immovable. I've seen it across many times in this early game trials, but just click force them to move. The other two options are just not clickable here. All right, I've rethought things, think, uh, I've rethought things uh, through here. We're going to put Jan Lian with mustering turns in order to get a my captain starting get, to get them deployed in Zhang He's army. But additionally, I want to make sure that these characters end up basically the units that I recruit having full HP by the time we then proceed to tackle Liu Bei's other settlements. And then I've put um, Yuan Shao and in camp stance. And I can do the same Secure with Zhang He's army. So we actually get these guys up in good health. For the next turn, I don't want to redeploy anybody, uh, like Zhang He including, because I want to have the, C the three seasonal brand new deployments for the next turn to utilize them. But for this turn at least, we can just go and get the three characters Embrace that I've been impulse. using. We're going to forget about Sejue for now. Um, and basically not use her uh, for supervised construction. At least for this uh, turn or two. Um, while I actually get the mustering turns Wisdom built up. Plus, we already got the three armies recruited. So we got the 30 lineage there. And I think we're at 378. So we're pretty good in terms of values to get white water. Uh, the increased army limits by plus three. So we're going to start doing that little by little. And then go from there. So, in terms of actual action points, Wencho leveled up. Wencho leveled up. Let's get Trust. And then from there, get Suesi Roar and stop utilizing him for Reward the Filial and then Corrupt. And then we're, gonna, we're not going to spend any money um, at this time because I want to utilize this money effectively as I mass expand towards this direction over here. All right. So, that will be it here. Actually, I can actually switch this one and get 50 more dollars. And then here... I think we're good. Location effects. All right. Yeah, we'll keep county school as that's going to help us level up Juan Shao a bit faster. All right. Nothing else to do here. Let us continue. So whenever you get the faction council missions and you see one that says like increase satisfaction by plus 40, it's because you have a, that character at less than 30 total satisfaction. So to increase it, we're just going to switch this item. Oh, that's going to get her to 29. Dude, are you serious right now? Come on, man. Here, let's do this. Let's go to her. And I want to spend a hundred dollars on her. But let me see. How can I get her to reach the happiness that I want? If I give her this item, there, and then, oh, oh, I need to get this to Juan Shao. Oh my God, I was gonna forget about it. Here, okay. How much does she have now? Twenty nine, right? Well, if I deploy her, hold on. No, hold on. If I go back, God damn it, she's at twenty nine, dude. How unlucky can I get? Nothing here gives happiness. 
Well, if I go to my faction leader. Damn it. Damn it. Where's Juan Tan? Does I give her 230? Nope. Plus four authority. Anything else that gives authority. He already has that one. Oh my god, dude. What? <laughs> this is like so freaking unlucky, man. All right. Yeah, I mean, I guess we can keep what we have. And then let me go back to the faction count. Ooh. The hell? Okay, so if I were to upgrade anywhere, it would probably be at Dong. Let's get Dong up and running. Yeah, let's forget about her for now. And then with that done, let's go here. And we're going to use these guys all together. So we're going to move Juan Shao this way. And this guy too. But he's going to be the first one that engages the settlement. And because I don't want to get military trespassing and then do war. I don't like to do that. Because sometimes you can like rethink twice before declaring war. And then you already has, have trespass. So I'm going to declare war here against Mr. Juan Shao. And then starve out. And we're going to go to Mr. Juan Shao. Right over here. And boom. We got him re reinforcing. Yeah, we're going to take a lot of losses for this secondary army. That's okay. And then with that, we're going to occupy with secure and occupy. Boom. Yeah, Zhang He took a bit. You know, his health is still pretty low. And then from here to continue, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move her outside of this army. And then you see her health now is basically on the ground. Same thing with Luo Jun. But then Zhang He here, we're going to utilize to get this Jian infantry captains deployed. So we're going to get this one. And then yet again, look how cheap they are. Just keep getting them. You can afford like a bunch of them. Boom. That's two of them there. We got a full army now with Zhang He leading. And then we got Luo Jun with patience. So good to utilize him to strike enemy armies. And then we can get an yet another Lian Li Jian daring, uh, what do you call it? Another uh, Jian infantry captain and get enlistment at level three to get 30 lineage per turn. So with that done, now we got a total of three, um, I think in total three uh, seasonal revenue deployments. So I can't deploy anymore. So I, I think we're done sir, there. My lord. And then for this guy, can we actually get this settlement the next turn? For peace. Okay, it seems like we can't. But what I could do is actually put him in force march to be able to reach. Ready for force march. We won't replenish, but that's okay. And then here we're good. Oh, we got a master's leather. Okay. And then we got now this year minus one construction time, and you can construct two buildings at once. That is great. So I don't necessarily need this one here anymore. We'll call him back the next turn. And then in terms of this building, we definitely can want to reconstruct this place um, or change up how we're building it. And then here we got $800 left and then we already switched this one to get make more money and here we're gonna the most character experience and then get at least a hundred um the one that gives more um income there the, the commerce income building and then these guys i can just start moving them on force march like i don't even need her to be in the actual like battles as long as she's deployed with brilliant that's all i need her for and these guys should be able to replenish pretty well now as for reforms i'm in a situation where i could get more trade agreements or start being able to recruit archers. But I really want to get this for the 10% extra character experience. That's really useful to have. And then with that done, all these guys should be able to... Actually, I should have done that before the battle and gotten a bit more experience. But oh well, too bad. And then from there, let me not do this. Let me keep this intact because I need to have enough money to afford all these retinues that I'm going to be deploying. And with that now, we're getting 38 lineage per turn because of the 8 from missions. And then also from the 30 because I got enlistment uh, level 1 completed. Now, that will be it here. Let us continue. All right, here, we're recalling Jan Lian from this position. And then somebody has leveled up Jan Lian. Let's get mobility. He's good for battle purposes. And then additionally from that, I've moved everybody to border this lumberyard location. And then I'm going to move this lady who... And then I want to go talk about this. I got crop failure for the next four turns. I need to fix this food situation. This is terrible. But we're going to work on that. So let me get her over here. And then starve out. And what I want to do here is actually get Juan Shao Fortune shall smile. this way. 70% ambush. Very good. We still got enough movement, right, to ambush? Yes. Okay. So now she can strike this location. Very good. Decisive victory. 
Those who do not bend to authority okay, and with that, we now have 15 more lineage. And I just want to keep using lineage as I acquire the Lanyas as a great peasantry income location. And we get, got a chance to get an ancillary. We got, I think we got labor recruiter. So in that case, let me go to Sauren. Oh, Shunju leveled up. Okay, nah, that's good. He's got flaming shot. Now that's going to be great for battling against Liu Bing. And then this lady, I'm just utilizing her for battle purposes. So just use her for the top side. And then if we go to Sao Ren, let's give him the labor to get AK population growth. That's excellent. And then over here, My aim is precise. She, now's got, she now has the chance to actually afford a couple of Jian infantry captains. We only have 800, though, in total actual income, which is bad. But let's go here. In doubt. The path is clear. Resist corruption and endure hardship. Hmm. To war. Okay, here another giant infantry captain. Okay, and this is the key. They gotta actually heal up. But then with Yuan Shao, let's put him into ambush. People are very low health here, which is dangerous. And then over here, how are we gonna fix this? I need to fix my food decision. This is like really bad. Okay, so I can put somebody over in Anping. I can max... Oof. Okay. And then... Uh, ooh, six food. Okay. So, request food. Trade this. And no. Check. 0.7. What? God damn it. Hit by a tow truck here, man. Up this down. Okay, and with that, now we're at zero food. Oof. Okay. Yeah, I don't I do not want to get hit by negative food. That is a no-go. That food shortage is super bad. Okay, yeah, so we'll put um Han Fu or Han Tong in Anping to fix the food situation. And I'm going to still eat up more food until I get to this fishing port. Because I got to get this Langya location. And then from there... Okay. I There's a chance that Tao Shan ends up getting into a coalition with Kong Rong. So we're actually going to declare war on him right now. Before that happens. And that way... You know, he would have to get in a coalition. And then ask Kong Rong to go to war against me. Which is harder than it, him being in a coalition with Kong Rong. Then I declare war on him. And he just simply asks him to support him for the, for the war. So... I think we're good there. We'll keep these guys as they are for now. Because I need to be careful with my money at this moment. Um, although, I can get... Let me see. Ooh. Hmm. Well, shit, dude. Okay, and how much are we at right now? We need two more. So, if I can get a thousand more dollars, that's going to be golden. Now, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to confront Lube's army with these stacks. And then once that army is done... I'll split these guys with a bunch of um, hidden axes or axe bands to just move towards Tao Shan while Yuan Chao pushes up northeast. Okay, I think this is good. All right, that's it here. Let's go. All right, beginning here, we're going to put Han Tong over in Anping to get more food as if... Because if GSC pushes towards me and he pushes around this time period, then I need to be able to give him food along with other things in order to be able to just... Um, basically manage getting peace deal with him. So Lu Zi appeared recruitable and he's willing to spy for us. So he's not going to be a turncoat. So we're definitely getting him into our faction, even though that's going to drop us really close to zero upkeep there. Now we want to get ready to face off against Liu Bang. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go and grab this art. Um, what do you call it? This um mercenary retinue here. And then we're going to get here our actual white water, which is the really strong little one that we want. And aside, for, 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 aside from that one, we want to make sure that we actually are able to manage all of these armies that we have and actually make them a bit stronger. So we're going to go through each of these and give them the things that are useful for them in terms of what I can afford. All right. So in terms of the ones that I went through, I went and gave the melee cav units the uh, melee evasion, melee attack rate. And then for this retinue of uh, Zhang He... I gave the melee evasion and then the melee attack rate. And I believe that's all I could afford. So we'll have to work our way to get the rest of these. But it'll be with time. And Fu has leveled up. So now he has reward to fill in and corrupt. Which we definitely want to utilize him for that. He's still very low in happiness. So I gotta keep him with that patrol commander uh, title. Now aside from that. 
we can definitely start messing around here with the, what the enemy can actually see that I have deployed. Let's put this person over here. Put this one right here. Shines the path to peace. And then this one. You can put you. Marching. Impossible to achieve. Towards peace. There we go. And he should definitely attack my settlement. Serve or at least I think he would. Set up the camp. All right, that's a lot of people in, in ambush. I think we de he'll definitely actually attack us. And then from there, we can... I haven't even built anything here. Yeah, I got this food hit crop failure was disgusting. So I think we're good here. Nothing else to really consider. Uh, Lucy, definitely I want to deploy. So Lucy's disgusting because he starts with these two units. Defenders of the Empire, which have Unbreakable as it is. And a series of treasury that have good splash attacks, good charge. So basically a good strong glass cannon AP damage unit. Now, if you take it up against Shaft, it has low melee evasion, but it has armor. So if you use, utilize this unit against Shaft units or units with low AP damage and basically so-so or mid-level um, weapon damage, then this unit will inflict a lot of damage on them and necessarily take that much pain. And he does start already at level 4, so that's great for us, even though that might actually cause us to suffer because he wants to be at a higher level position. So I definitely got to work my way up to Marquise or marry him into our faction in order to actually put him as heir. All right, so San Jan is willing to give us $731 for another aggression pack. We're going to take it. He's also willing to get a military access. Let's get it with him as well. All right, and I want to avoid any further wars in the north, so I'm going to get a non-aggression pack with San Jan here and basically just stabilize things up in the north, so I just keep focusing in these directions. All right, so that will be it here. Let us continue. All right, because we're at seven food now, we can definitely drop... Oh, shit. We can drop this down a little bit at least. It does actually drop our income a little bit, so you have to be very careful with that. Stay now, fixed. aside from that, though, I really want to move these guys forward to engage um, his army. Sanity. Actually, just encamped on me, so I really didn't actually get a chance to actually engage him. Now, the guy that I do want to engage with is Lo Jun because he does have patience. Now, aside from that, I'll give him the Shaman Ancillary as well. And then with that, he should actually get... 35% total extra capture chance. An and then we'll put Juan Shao right lineage. over here. Resist the chaos of change. It cannot be done. How can we get her into the picture? Ever forward! I refuse to do this. Jesus Christ. Okay, come on. Marching! Remain honest. No effort will achieve this. Ben. Is she even do not break? Hold on. Oh, she's in it. Okay, cool. Strike through. Of course he, of course he's running away, dude. Oh my god. Okay, right here. My destiny. Oh, he's actually deployed somebody else. Okay. But with that, let's go right here. March. Deflect with shield, cleave with sword. Ever forward. And this is it. Destiny awaits us. Charge come Decisive on. victory. Pretty good chances to capture all of the Oh my god, I engaged with the wrong person. Okay, hold on. Mm, let me see. I withdraw. We must fall back, but the war is far from over. Okay, everybody's still in the picture. Attack! Nice. Look at these freaking capture chances. <laughs> then again, all that I really want to do here is uh release them the people very good what are my losses okay, not bad there just these guys took a lot of losses all right 15 lineage and then do recruit do not piss them off any further For China. really we didn't capture anybody good. i hate this game sometimes okay awesome so let's retreat back with these guys Marching towards victory and then we need to get him Ready yourselves. Yeah, we should be able to manage this. Basically, if we go on force march, we need to be able to reach the settlement the next turn. March they can just be here. And these guys, now I'm separating the army so these guys can focus on this territory while Yuan Chao focuses on what remains of Liu Bei. And Tong leveled up. I basically care about him for um, basically utility purposes. This lady is a little bit mad. Remember that these guys are all um, distant relatives. I don't really care about them necessarily. So... Um, basically giving them titles is okay as they're already only they're really less with a title cost you know happier than not having any titles now with that done 
I do have a chance here to go to Liu Yao. And because Juan Chang came of age, I can marry another character with clerk. Oh my god. I can marry another character with clerk into my faction. For one food. There we go. So we got two characters with clerk into our faction. And then Yan Bai Hu, is his son still available? I don't have any females available for marriage. Okay. That's okay. So yeah, we'll get these guys ready to engage on the enemy down here. And then I should, once I grab this location, I should get to positive income. Um, although my food actually might actually drop. When does this go away? Two turns? Good. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to be very careful the next turn. All right, that's it here. Let's continue. All right, here, I moved Juan Shao to engage this settlement. He's then he, the enemy is getting a lot of units basically healed up. That's okay. These guys here, though, are basically... I put them in this county in order to drop the enemy ammunition to, like, really low magnitudes, like... 11 <laughs> and then aside from that i have a total of 295 lineage so if i go here at least for these guys i can at least give them 10 percent more armor to eat up better the, even better than missile fire but aside from that what they really could benefit from is getting the extra battle running speed and unbreakable these guys do cost a lot of money but i think with this unit since we're doing this um settlement battle i think what we can do is just focus on upgrading my axe band units as cheaply and economically as possible. And then how much is it? 200. Yeah, we can afford this. Okay, very good. So with that, if we look at these units now, they do have pretty good extra melee evasion. Their melee attack rate is at 33. And then with that, they also got a bit more charge bonus. So they're just basically glass cannon, really weak units. And then with that, we're going to go over here with Juan Shao. And then do this battle, which is going to take some time. He did put Zhang Fei as a freaking administrator. So it's literally a bunch of shaft. We just have to basically shoot them to death. And then eliminate them with the legendary infantry. Um, Before doing that though. Let's make sure we give to Juan Shao. The shaman. Just capture generals and release them. Here.
We got a lot of money from doing this battle. Damn, a couple of generals got killed. Holy crap. And then with that, we're going to secure and occupy to get these guys up in health as fast as possible and maintain the population in this region. All right, so to continue here, I'm building the workforce distribution office to switch the extra food production that I'm getting here into actual income from peasantry. And then aside from that, I got all these places running in such a way where I'm going to switch this location to not necessarily mass produce food, but mainly to be utilized as a location to get um actually it's demolishing this one i want to utilize this location to get more prestige in order to get to marquees aside from that i think we're in a pretty good state dong's overall public population growth does um i mean i don't really, really like the situation that it's in at the moment but we'll survive with how much it is and we'll get this event gone the next turn so from there i should be able to fix my overall reserve situation across all of these regions specifically this one that will basically drop to like one but it'll be okay the next turn so that is it here. Let us continue. All right. So here, Gonsung San is in my own territory. So I'm just going to basically weaken him for the next six turns to really uh, cause him to start hit, getting hit by attrition. I can get a chance to reroll Juantan straight, which aren't necessarily good at the moment. Um, but I could potentially get a reroll on Juan Chang. Yeah, he, he needs him more than him. So let's get these two. And then if we look at Juan Chan now, where is he? Juan Chan now still has Vayne, but now he has Scholarly. He used to have another really bad one. He needs like three basically dude his traits are just terrible man so anyways with that done um we're in a situation where we can basically start pushing towards tao shan but i want to make sure that the enemy sees one of these guys more visible than the others and from there we'll really confuse him let's get over here there we go and then moving forward right over here we will strike when they are yep, very good Set up the camp. Okay, and then aside from that, I can take Yuan Chao, Yuan Chao's army to take out Liu Bei fully. And then this is the last of what Liu Bei has, and he's done. Yep, and we're going to secure and occupy the settlement. Boom. His, settle his faction is now done, and then we got Guanju. Very good. So Guanju's willing to join us, and then with that, we got one of the best characters in the game, and he is honorable. I mean, he's not going to be somebody with issues in terms of overall happiness. So we got him only for 10 lineage, the overall cost. And then from there, what's left on this location is what's left of the Dong Lai uh, based region. And now this army is fully built up. We have 40 freaking food now. And we did drop in total salary because of the characters that I have at the moment. Now Lucy is getting more pissed off because he is in a situation where... In a situation where he doesn't like the position that he's in as he wants to be at a higher core position. So we do need to fix that. Um, but what we're going to do here is we have enlistment now, five out of seven revenues um, recruited. And then I did bring down the taxation because, I mean, I did it the previous turn. 
as I could just take the hit overall to the reserves and lower down the hit that I'm taking that I was taking to public order across my regions. Public order does need to be stabilized um, across all these regions that I've mentioned. But now what we're gonna do here is go to this guy and we're gonna get this super deadly one Jew deployed. Oh my god. And Luzi also we want to deploy. But for now, Guanju will be enough just to get him into battle and do a lot of damage. Let's get him. We don't care about all this chaff units that he has. Let's remove them. They were highly leveled up. That's okay. And look what he has. He has freaking reach already. Let's make him leading so we're going to get that extra movement. He does have Binding Fury and then Unstoppable, which makes him a little bit of a nasty little machine. And then God of War with great splash damage. So with that done, though, this guy I can utilize to just finish the settlement of Dong Lai, while these small armies can now focus on this area of the map. We did get one more reform, and with that, we can now proceed to get... This gets interesting here, because if we look, the Sorong faction is trading with the Han Empire, and so is uh, Zhang Xiao. I wish I could trade with them, but if I take the settlement of the Han Empire here, their trade will be blocked. It's not like I could actually be able to trade with them. And if I look in terms of anybody else that's available for trade... I think that we got them all already. Yeah, Taoshan was one, but he was training with Liu Bei. So with that out of the way, what we're going to do is go back to our reforms. And we still got a few that are very good for us to pursue, at least for the ones that we see here. So in terms of these locations, minus one construction time is great, but we can't get that one just yet. And then aside from that, we do want to work our way up to reduce corruption as we're mass expanding really fast. So it's time to work our way up this ladder in order to get that. Now here, we're basically visible for the for Taoshan's army of shaft units, uh, kind of shaft army units. So before I do any dummy dummy stuff, let's make sure that we upgrade these guys. No, let me not spend it. I think we're good with that. And then he'll engage us and he'll have to deal with us there. And then I can raise no more army because I reached the army limit. So that is it here. And let us continue. So here is one of the characters that we really want to capture into our own faction. It's Sangba. So he has 28% capture chance right now. We'll see if we can get him. If not, then I'll just move Lo Jung to leading the army. Then I can basically take him from there. The problem is that the enemy engaged in his county, not my own. So he's not getting the ammunition debuff hitting him. All right, very good. These guys, yeah, some of them kept their health. That's okay. Let's see if we capture Zangba. Uh, okay, we can just do recruit. No, we need the actual money. Mm, replenishment is more important. Let's take the replenishment. Okay, excellent. All right, it is now turn 15. We're almost at marquee. We need 30 total extra prestige. We're going to move Lo Jung leading this army. We're going to give him back. Oh, shit. We're going to give him back the shaman item right here. And then from there, we're going to move all these people forward right here. Right over here. Unified and this guy forward to engage. Standard stats. And then with that, it is a close victory. 60% chance of capturing Zamba. That is exactly what I want. Let's build one of these guys. And then from there, we should be able to deal with them the next turn. There is one person, Mizu, the dependable administrator there. We'll deal with him. And then over here, let's move to grab Dong Lai completely. who cross me no death excellent as always secure and occupying we must lay foundation Juan Chao. ah i thought Juan Chao leveled up so in terms of here so this gets interesting because i want this army to have night battles that's really a very strong way to go and get wisdom of the river an inspiring search it would only be for Juan Chao's unyielding earth if i were to use him for that aspect and getting patience is also great so this side of the tree is really good but i think that night battles with how strong it is we can definitely go for this route and really benefit our army um, moving forward. Although, you know what? Getting patience and then reach. I need it. This army needs it. Yeah. Let's keep these guys as they are. And then we'll keep this army intact as it is. And then we'll catch Dong Lai the next turn. Go over here. Population is really low as it is in this location. We're not going to switch this up. And then here. I got money to build up any of this. Oh, right. I need to go through this. you dead. And it's 11.1 to get peace with him. But what we're going to do is give him all of this. More items that I can give away. And it's 7.9. But we have a quadrillion food. And we can always give money. 
Oh, we have $140 right now available to give away. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our items. So this lady is at 33 happiness. Lucy is trending very down. There. Very good. Okay, who does not need a title? Who does not? There we go. And then who else has a title at the moment? Nobody else that I think needs one. So Han Fu is pissed off. Already has a title as it is. Let's give him one that's 200. Um, um, there we go. Luzi is a little bit mad. Now at 42. Here. Okay, and then Wang Fan Jue, how is she doing? 33. Okay, let's go back to GSC. Be short. And then let's do what can we trade? One. I guess we can trade this, even though it's a great item. Let's trade it. Let's do that. Payment. Down. There we go. So now for 10 turns, you won't declare war ish. And then from there, we just keep focusing on this area of the map. Satisfactory deal. Okay. Very good. And continuing here, it seems like it's all pretty good down there. Here, we could definitely de um, deconstruct this to get the marquees. We need about 25 more. Drop this one down. One kind of has it. We can get Dong Lai. And then over here, we already got this one built. And with that done, we'll grab this settlement next. Hopefully, we'll get Sangba. And then over here, I want to be able to reach Dong Lai. I'll do that in two turns. And then I think with that, we should be able to get potentially two marquees. We, actually, you know what? Don't deconstruct this one just yet. All right, let's go. So here, because Misu has um, night battles, he's able to do this engagement against retreat. me at this moment. So I have to retreat. And interesting, he actually chased me off here, Mr. Tao Shan. But I think I might be able to manage this against these units. Hmm. Let me think. These units that I have are pretty weak. 38. How much ammunition do these guys have? 12 only? Yeah, I mean, the generals are very weak. What I don't want to do is actually kill... Oh, nice. He does have resilience. Okay, very good. Let's go. And with that done, let's see if we actually capture Zangba. Oh, we got Tao Shan. That, yes. And then with Mr. Tao Shan in the picture, we can just keep, we can just release. Um, although we don't necessarily care. We already just got Zangba. And if we actually kill him, oh, we can his faction greatly. Let's execute to get a little bit more lineage. And then let's replenish here for these units. And then from there, actually, should I get the money? Yeah, let's get the money. They fought only for their beliefs. Yeah, this army is basically toast. The settlement is basically toast now. This is great. 
all right and then here all three of these armies are now ready to take this settlement on and even with night battles they shouldn't be able to win against this army while Yuan Chao's basically focuses on Dong Lia, and then I can use Yuan Chao's army to focus northwards and then my ants can just focus on the rest of this area of the map somebody else has appeared recruitable just a bunch of shaft units but this is the guy I wanted to talk about so we got Sangba in the picture and his main advantage is that he can get minus 25% recruitment and upkeep cost for Captain Retinues. So if you combine that with the Captain Missions, that means that we can get a total of minus 70% recruitment cost for Captain Retinues as we get them. Especially the elite ones that cost a lot in the campaign. And then aside from that, I think we're in a pretty good state here. Still negative income, but we should get positive once we grab these two regions and then go from there. I moved these guys basically closer around this um, settlement. I think we're in a pretty good state here. Let's no. actually get back a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we're going to drop him supplies like crazy, but that's okay. All right, now we're going to go here and attack with Yuan Chao this location. And it's basically a close victory for some reason. But is that really that bad? Oh, one the Legion got pretty hurt. Okay, so with that done, we just got 15 lineage. Let's secure and occupy. We got two positive income. And then we're at how much marquee? We need about nine more. We don't care about this garrison being here. Um, This location has a pier so we can get commerce income. So it's good to build this place up for actual um commerce based income and food Impossible. and then here let's get sanghi to strike this area decisive victory and we have taken the big major region of taoshan or taoshan's faction so now we've basically left them with almost nothing let's get these guys here sanghi has leveled up and we've gotten to marquee and it is turn 17. now with that done let's go here and level up now, the trade agreement, I don't really care too much about them anymore. I think I've gotten a pretty good overall amount in terms of what I can get at this time. I'm going to get three more armies based upon having, um, what do you call it? Based upon having the plus three from the commandiri or from the uh, lineage. So with that, I can get a bunch of assignments as I have a bunch of characters just laying around. Get a total of 25% more character experience faction wide. And one more administrator to utilize to basically um, construct regions cheaper. But with that done, Lu Zhong has leveled up. He's good for battles, so keep working him that in that direction. And then with that done, this is the main army that's left of Tao Shan's uh, faction. And then we can just basically uh, continue here on a straight beeline path to grab all of Penchen Xiaopi. While Juan Chao now has finalized in this location here. A lot of actions have been taken this turn. Mainly, let me just go over all the locations. So I'm going to deconstruct these uh, prestige buildings that I've built in order to build my actual income across all of these regions. And I'm also deconstructing it here at Dong. And then Lean stays the same for now, giving the plus four satisfaction from that yellow turbine building. Deconstru I already looked at Lean there. Lanya, I'm deconstructing the building as well. And then Dong Lai is at level five. Just kind of like sitting here at this level. We just keep it for the prestige. And then, um, wait, that was uh, Dong Hai. And then for Dong Lai over here, I'm going to deconstruct both of the food buildings or the patrol building that's here and then the food building that's in this location because I mainly want to build up this region. Actually, let's keep the food building and then we'll, we'll build the commerce building here to kind of just build it into a commerce slash um, farming location. And then aside from that, in terms of um, my administrators, I put one at Dong and recruited legendary infantry to her entire retinue in Liu Pingming. And then I went to also put one at Langya Sanghe to basically utilize him to build up this location up and save money as much as possible in this area. Now, aside from that, in I Donghai, I basically recruited a few more units for Zhanghe's retinue here. And then I recalled everybody that was in this area. I gave Sanghe the shaman item. And then I went in terms what of assignments. Let's go over all of them. When shall stay where he is until he gets Swessy Roar? I recalled both of the food assignments. And then Juan Shang, I'm deploying in Lanya to get a lot of peasantry income. Sejue, I'm deploying at Dong to build it up faster. And then at Dong, I'm pulling Xuan Chi with public appeasement, which will cause me to lose reserves, but I'm already at 34. And in turn, that's going to help me build up the public order as much as possible. If you look at our overall situation in terms of public order, here, if we look here, pretty negative on some areas, I could certainly drop this down to stabilize food as it is. And then from there, this will actually help fix up this entire um, part of the map. And if I look here, I won't necessarily drop in food as it is for the next turn. So I should be okay. Now, in terms of that, though, if I look at reserves here, I'm going to only be at three. And I might actually drop more than that. But with that done, we're going to drop an overall treasury that we're going to have. 
But I'm going to be able now to basically... I need to get enough money in the next two turns in order to get the seven uh, total per or enlistments to get 70 lineage per turn. And in this army, I can utilize to push towards these regions that are left here in this area. And then in terms of my actual tree, I move Sauren to um, Chancellor in order to just keep him happy as it is. But mainly to get the extra peasantry income. And oh, I got to change that laborer item. So because Dong is the one that I really want to, because the public order is getting hit by um, the population growth penalty. Let's go to Yu Ping Ming and then give her the Sauren um, public order population growth uh, item to actually stabilize it very good and then aside from that i actually want to change this but i don't have money to do so i will wait to do that this army is good as it is and we'll get it actually up and running and we can rotate it down to basically take out south Sao, or i can rotate it north to deal with gsc who is literally getting melted up here in the north i saw it wait eight turns in terms of food but i think with that done you will basically try to grab the locations up here that are part of the Han Empire. But in this area, I can then just focus on grabbing this fish or fishing port of the Han Empire. And then basically flanking the South South faction from the South. While um, as he moves basically to the other uh, Han Empire regions across the entire area, area of this map. While I basically flank him and take out all these weak regions. While my main strong army actually pushes on his, on his main armies. God damn it, he got Gojia. All right. That will be it here. Let us continue. All right here, we're going to get a non-aggression pack with Zhang Hao directly below us. Additionally, we see that Wang Baolan here is actually married to Juan Tan. What we can do is we can actually divorce her even though it's going to piss her off. And then with that, we can utilize her for marriage purposes to marry either Lucy or Zhang Ba into the faction. And then with that, he'll become a distant relative. So it's going to be $3,000 of total cost to do this at this moment. But with this done... Now we can utilize Zangba as our heir. But before doing that, you got to do this in this order. We're going to drop Juantan over here. That's going to further decrease our overall money. And then we're going to grab over here, Mr. Zangba, to make heir. Boom. So now if we look at Juantan, he's a little bit mad. He's a little bit mad. But if we go to fix him up real quick, he's at 13 at the moment. So I guess we got to give him a little title. Boop. There we go. He's good. So Wang Faonjie is, is also pissed. And then Sejue has leveled up. Let's level her up there. And then in terms of the of the locations across the board, I have a lot of buildings that I've deconstructed. So I'm, I'm just basically keeping them for slots that are open for construction. You just got to fix them all up. And aside from that, we got some characters I don't really care too much about. I moved Juan Xiao on Force March. Actually, I can just retreat to the south because I basically got to basically attack um, Hao Jing and um han empire from two directions it appears that zarong was potentially pulled into war against me so i gotta handle him oh because right he's in a coalition with uh tao jin i believe words, yeah so i gotta wife. deal with him too and then i basically recruited two more legendary infantry here to handle this enemy and i still have some money left so let's recruit one more legendary infantry and let's go to quick deal he's and it seems that with this i might be able to get Welcome, a little bit of friend. money back 17 about this side he says a little bit more to get as much as we can here we go a successful bid and then continuing here with the full melee infantry unit uh retinue let's get one more legendary infantry uh full uh retinue of just basically basic archer militia and then once like these guys get unbreakable they basically pay for what they're worth because of their ap damage um, and they're, and because of that, they're basically munched through the enemy as we engage them. We just gotta deal with what this guy has left. And in here, we'll focus on basically rotating out in this direction. In terms of anything else that I've done, assignments, um, I'm recall, I'm pulling Han Fu, Fu Dong, to lower corruption there. And Wen Xiao leveled up and he got Sui Roar, so I'm gonna recall him. And I still need more food, so I'm basically putting Zangba at Anping to get that food back. While my, I basically stabilize all the public order across all of my regions. In the next few turns so that is it here let us continue all right it is spring and we can get agricultural economic focus to really stabilize our areas and then we can either select to build up henne or other options so let's see can we get for example dong e no nay no bong good and then here let's get the agricultural economic focus i don't think i care about anything else here and 
can actually start the raid on GSC. And that could actually weaken him in the north. His army should be in a pretty bad state. So let's get these options down. Boom, we got $1,700. Excellent. And then the raid has started potentially on his trade port in the north. So that's very good. That's going to potentially affect them greatly. And then on this area, we can just get in the water to just basically maximize our movement to reach all the way down to this fishing port all the way over here. March has won. And in this army, I need to utilize it to try to take this army on. And I'm just going to basically move Troops. this direction. Get on force march. Surprise the enemy. Quickly. And then if I look at my tech's ability, still pretty da pretty low. And then Zangba has leveled up. And now we have minus 25% re redeployment cost. So we have minus 50% in total for our faction. We did get one more reform that we can utilize for our advantage. And then if we look here, as I've mentioned, I want to work my way up to get the corruption reduction option here. Because I definitely am gonna, I'm gonna—I'm expanding really fast. So you definitely want to do that in your campaign. But with that out of the way, we can just our, work our way up here and get the Saber Infantry as well. And then reduce our overall corruption there. And then I have about a thousand dollars left, which means that I can actually utilize this. To actually start building up locations. I do have 16 food, which is manageable. And as I was saying, I do want to um, recall from this position. Anfu is pretty low in happiness. Now, if I look, Anfu can be used. He's already used for the word to fill out and corrupt. If I look at Han Tong, he's got to level up once more to get that. Which means I could actually utilize him for wisdom if I actually get the chance to deploy it. But right now, we have pretty good satisfaction. I think we can keep uh, Wen Chao as it is in the current position that he's um, in at the moment. And then here, we can just get... Once we get the money to build the inn, we'll build it there. And then here, because this is mainly a peasantry income location, let's get the taxation building constructed. And then here, we want to get commerce income up and running. So we got that there. We got that there. And then here, this location already has very high population as it is. Um, very low overall income, though. So we can definitely kind of stabilize this region and build it up. Actually, not really a good building to a region to build up. So actually, we can bring it down in level. Um, We can keep it in the current level as is. And we can get higher population if we want it to, even though it's just a food hub. So let's actually build Drifter. Yeah, let's build the food location there and, build, and bring it up to get a higher multiplier there. And in here, we'll keep this as it is. Here, this one. We want to switch this building, but we won't do it just yet. This guy is in ambush. And then let's make sure I start deploying the people that I want to utilize for battle purposes. Like Guan Yu. Wu Jun. And then the brilliant people. Right? So this one. And definitely another one. Unification requires discipline. With courage. We must rest. There we go. She get in the settlement. That's better. Let's get that those military supplies. And Zerong is trying to flank us for some reason. He's gonna basically get shot in the foot, or he's gonna shoot himself in the foot. So I think we're good there. And then in quick deal, is there anything that we want to do? Ogan, really happy with us. Eh, don't care about that faction. Okay, that's it here. Let's go. All right, on this turn, Juan Shao leveled up, so I got a mobility, and then we can get this thing courage. This, give him shaman as. Zarong's army. Remember that when you're in the in the ocean, um, everything is auto resolved. So we can just engage him here. He's gonna retreat. That's okay. And there goes Zarong's army. Sorry, dude. It did take some losses, but the next settlement that we're gonna grab is a Han Empire region. That's nothing to worry about. This guy wants to be employed. He does have pretty good traits, but I don't I don't want to spend money on secondary characters the at the moment. Let's get recruit here. The replenishment back for our own units. Excellent. So Zebu has now become faction leader. Right All the way over here. Oh my god, dude. Okay. And then on this front, what we're going to do is actually move these guys out this way. My blade is poised. And then we're gonna move. We are as one. Right here. On the march. Be ready. And you're gonna strike here and get it. The main army is on the major region. Okay. Yep. We didn't take that many losses except the lady. It's okay. She's just there for brilliant. So, and then here we're going to secure and occupy. We will bring righteousness. Not necessarily a region that we care too much about the population for, but what I do care about is that I have a total lineage right now of 306. So we can utilize that. 
um to basically Unify get these guys in one direction let's take this guy in back in ambush Evil nice. cannot escape here we can raise one more army Phoenix. so we definitely want to get some guys deployed that are pretty good Let like desire, the end. Shape and guide passion and then Luzi definitely but I think we can keep it only with him right now this and let's abuse the lineage for a second here promote calmness good to enlightenment what do you wish my lord of course we have two thousand dollars left this one switched get the inbuilt good food up the wazoo food up the wazoo everywhere and in this location no we'll build the in when we have the money and then we'll get this fishing port here and then basically go and take out zebu while this this army here engages this army on this location the center. and then we proceed to just take out the end okay a bunch of random characters and then with that out of the way it seems that some people have leveled up and Fu leveled up so definitely here we want to use them for battle purposes so getting trust is good and patience and then Yuan Chan leveled up so he's just standard abilities here for like unyielding earth stone bolt work and then familial conflict for the Yuan is good for battle purposes not necessarily as a leader but let's just give him this here we want to remove the vein trade though of course and we will get just our public order across all regions stabilizing across the board excellent all right that will be it here let's continue okay so continuing here we have the chance to actually continue building up our locations this place is a food location with a commerce building constructed definitely want to build a state workshop here basically for the adjacent corruption reduction no and then here and blood. aside from that in terms of this overall regions i'm building up the rural administration office in langya to keep getting more peasantry income this place is built as it is i'm building the horse exchange over in hene to get more commerce income on that front and then aside from that um book of mountain and seas has been acquired and then i've put everybody here in ambush stands and mr juan Shao captured this region and i did secure an occupy to get this army back up to full health then i can just grab langya with e i still have my um what do you call it my treasury or my public order down to the ground in or uh by a taxation in order to get stability across all of my regions and then from there i'll bring it back up but here we're just gonna surprise the enemy to attack him i can deploy a couple more people for battles but if i go here i can definitely get pretty with good items around that has appeared okay so we definitely want to get luzi that mo this guy is disgusting but I oh hold on i need to focus on finishing this so let's go and get another gen infantry captain let's go get one more i have enough funds oh i don't have enough funds ah. And now we finished all of the captain missions. These guys have very low health, but that's because of how I've left them. But with that, now we have um, two semi or almost two full armies around here. And then we'll just engage these guys little by little and take them out. And on this front, give him this. And we'll give somebody else a bow in a little bit. And I think I don't think I'll be able to reach the settlement next turn, but yeah, we'll be able to try to manage and get it in two turns. All right, Tao Jin's army finally has fallen for us. Let's go with Sang Heat. Actually, the, my recruited captains on the other army are gonna be toast. Let's see if we lost any of them. Oh wow, we didn't. Okay, cool. Okay, with that done, let's see if we capture any of these guys. Yep. Him and him. Remember, I don't care about any of these guys right now. And we definitely want to get money, so just release, release. And then Tao Jin, we don't care about being happy with them. Although we want to replenish this army, so let's get that. All right, so here I move Juan Shao closer towards the Zarong build uh, settlement to take that one out. And I'm going to grab Zhang He's army to just take this retinue on by himself. That'll be actually next to this settlement, so I have to deal with both of them. And then I should be able to acquire the settlement and secure and occupy you get replenishment across his entire army to get it back up to full health. So all these guys are now close. Very good. Could have put Shaman on him, but and then oh my god. Free the ball! Money, 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 money. Let the Excellent. captives go. And then here. To war. Be toasted. Hopefully no none of my units get killed completely. Ah, Excellent. Today. And then with that. Ooh, baby, look at this. Our Our boy. and grows. mass expansion up the what the hell are you doing with this one dude what about that peasantry there what okay and here though it's the next turn 
Oh, well, um, not really. So if we go over with him, any level three there, you should be able to handle this going this way. Moving out. Get this game some. We get by ourselves. Maybe when we replenish, we do. Serve integrity. Here, in case we can't, my lord. Isn't this bad boy up here. Consider each step. Okay, Sang Yan has taken all of this, and we have an aggression pack with him, so I don't worry too much about his ass. And then about about everybody else, or everything else. With that done, a run level up. Remember, we got we want him for heavenly presence. What about everything else? Sang by his heir. Oh yeah, more available army. Okay, excellent. Air. In. Oh shit, we have one assignment up that I've forgotten about. Oh, wench. Oh. That's why people are unhappy. Okay, just keep him with this one for now. Uh, no. And tongue. Food. To attention. Zero food, but it's getting eight from fishing. So if I go here, food production was fifty percent. Yeah, we're gonna wait the word to fill in and corrupt just in just a bit. Here. Autumn has arrived. Lloyd with Zwesi Roar. That's disgusting. Cold. We also want to get Luzi into the picture. Oh, he doesn't get along with somebody? Wen Chao. Oh, nice. He's going to get rival with him. Oh, that is so disgusting. All right. So I think with that done, this guy's still a freaking player. Here. Let's go with this guy. Slow. And then aside from that, we definitely want him leading the Lord. army. Oh, no, hold on. You have oh, this guy yeah. polum, my okay. Lord. And then with that done, our nasty. But I can still get good shot cap as it is. So let's remove this guy. But we always keep the defenders of the Empire. They have unbreakable. Interesting. Always keep these units around. And then aside from that, 466 in total freaking, um, what do you call it? In total lineage. So with that, we can get increased army limit with this guy. And then we have 166 left in lineage, so I have to be. I want to be careful here. Army. In freaking army, dude. Action. One, now that you have Zangba, and you see how cheap all of the damn freaking uh, characters are, it's gonna start getting really nasty um, across the board because you can start basically affording very cheap armies with very low upkeep. You just basically attack from multiple directions or mass them in areas, you get very high auto resolve. Okay, that's it. All here. right, and to go crazy here, let's attack this settlement. It's a close defeat. My surrender is not going to work. Show no Potentially, our final battle will be grabbing this region. And then over here, let's go to this location. And then this guy is going to attack. It's level three, so this is perfect for me. Decisive victory. Take it. Now, this other army should be a the pretty good help. voice cannot be silenced. Right. Okay, so we have 271. Secure and occupy. In time, they will thank us for this. Ajin has been destroyed. And now we are bordering Sao Sao. That's exactly I always Do you do. have orders for me, my lord? Let's move this lady out. I am here to she does serve, have very low health. My lord. Now we can go to war against the yellow turbans. I don't really care about them. Realize Let's go and strike. And correct them. On the march. A war? Actually, no, hold on. Look at this. China can be reunited should my plan succeed. I can do though is I think he's at war with them already. China I, can I thought I could actually get money from him. It's okay. Let's go here. Spread in all directions. Close victory, delegate. And now we're getting a great settlement that's gonna help us stabilize our satisfaction with Ata across the board. Belief, and you will be undefeatable. Excellent. And here, secure and occupy. A fine settlement. These guys now are we'll going up very well. And then here, we want to get him with fury, zeal. Of course, we want to get him with zeal. But we want to get mighty thrust as well. Actually, you know what? Let's go for this shit, dude. Get the zeal, 
and then now he's gonna become a little machine dude and here we can move out in this direction this guy is doing well and then i can basically just leave this uh i think i can leave the we call it the campaign in this status so if we look here right we're in a situation where we can afford like crazy we can afford like, armies upon armies of just people like for example here just our captains and now they're upgraded so now we're in the advanced ones and this makes them just a tiny little bit deadlier now their cost has increased but that is okay we always want to just use like really cheap overall units so this example this guy is like a spear based general the thing about the thing about uh they have to think about when using captains is that they don't get artillery so that's kind of like the weak thing that you have to deal with that you need to have like a strategist potentially dealing dealing uh leading your armies if you want to strike major regions because of the you need an artillery piece but you can just mass spam the on infantry and then archer captains like this and then from there now what i want to show you is how much do i have right now in lineage 276 so if we go to these guys right what i would do is across all of your um melee ones given melee attack rate the charge bonus the armor how traps is always useful the melee evasion and then um uh white water or unbreakable and then from there if for the ready that does not have um white water give it stock so i would say that for your missile units you can give them potentially uh white water and then for your melee units give them stock so the enemy potentially doesn't pull off the charge when going to engage them and then always give the battle running speed to as many units both archers and melee units getting this is great and then unbreakable for your miss melee units is a must have in terms of the top stuff here the ambush battles i never verified if the skaven uh, offensive ambushes actually works but this is on a red and you by red and you basis if it does work i know the 25 percent chance of ambushing uh, did not work i reported it to the bug fix guys so hopefully they can fix that so as for the archer captains um guerrilla deployment is useful to start shooting the enemy from really up close now nothing else here really matters in fact you can ignore the guerrilla deployment if you want attack range seven percent this is a must have and then 10 percent armor will make him trade better with like other archer units fire arrows and poison arrows good to have range attack rate 15 percent disgusting ranged ammunition also great and then from there 20 percent more range damage really useful for archer units um because it's like base range damage boost and then um smoke screen is good to basically stop the enemy from potentially shooting you and then from there you can get more range block chance if you want to it's really expensive though to basically trade better against other missile units so i think this leaves us in a very good overall state and I can just do this battle here and completely eliminate this guy. And right now it's turn 23. Pretty good state. 31 overall food. And basically here it's just like continue building these places up to build as much food, as much commerce income as possible. Oh my god, that's what I needed to do here. Oh dude, I messed up. I need to build a freaking inn here. How did I just not notice that? Freaking special, man. Okay, yeah, we'll build this place up. And then here this is a food location. So you can build the farm supply storage there we'll keep this as it is down to very low incomes across different areas now we got sunche in the picture we want to definitely stay very friendly with this asshole always 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 stay friendly with him and everybody sees me as very powerful so we can just start getting peace with we like thought you dead. um what do you call it with dong zhuo um, even though people really, I mean, people really like him, so you can just stay at war with him, and he's not really going to be sending anything strong against you. But from here on out, you still have the main mission to basically fa destroy GSC's faction. We have one to destroy San Yan's faction. We'll deal with the North later, but eliminating Cao Cao early on in the campaign is really va valuable to do. And as you can see, we can end up bordering Sun Che and perhaps even trading with him. This yep. will be short. If you reach all the way down to this region that Cao Cao has. And you basically flank with these armies this area of of Cao Cao, and then oh, mr juan chao takes him on directly or you basically meet up all armies together and you can even auto resolve against the army of Cao Cao, and then completely take him out before turn 30 which will make your late game much easier and you'll have a settlement really close to sun che but if you want to you can basically have a location as a build it up as a military location to recruit units like teleportation armies and then you can have them all redeploying here after you stabilize all of the north and then from there take on sun che directly so that is it here 
I really want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye bye.